Some of the personnel turbulence in Washington a reflection on Rhode Island? The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Takeo Comfort Solutions. I don't know, some of the usual self-deprecation that makes us special might uh, rear its ugly head here tonight. I'm not quite sure, but Phil Isle is a friend of the program, a terrific journalist, been working on a big project and been banging away with the federal government for a long period of time, but he's not here for that specifically, although I'll check in with him on that tonight. Uh, he's here because he's written a, a piece that suggests that, well, uh, even the likes of Sean Spicer might be embarrassing to Rhode Island. He's a native Rhode Islander, of course. I'm all ears. I'm not advocating this position, but I want everyone's point of view matters. And we'll talk to Phil coming up momentarily. Great to have you in. Thanks for joining me on this Thursday evening. You know, the Trump administration is not cooperating with me. We record this program each day in the early afternoon. Donald Trump was supposed to have his press conference well before our broadcast, but he started it when we started the production of the show. So. We'll catch up, hopefully, with some of what he has to say for tomorrow night's show. In the meantime, let's go to the rundown and just check in on some of the things that are happening here and also in Washington. Yesterday's uh, news was more or less dominated by the governor's press conference. The front page headline at the Providence Journal kind of tells the story. Bungled from the get-go, and it seemingly was, this now $364 million computer program. It's all IT. It's all the social services, all the stuff that people get and the services that they're provided, both cash and other means of um, uh, resource, have just, you know, they had a whole bunch of computer systems doing a whole bunch of things. Then this big one comes in to collate the whole thing and high-tech it and everything else, and they went, okay, go! And it sputtered, and it's been sputtering for months. Uh, here's the latest from Eyewitness News on the meeting that I attended with the governor yesterday. I'm just not buying this whole thing. Lawmakers asking questions after the release of a 30-page report proclaiming the problems with UHIP are much more significant than anticipated. I am a little more annoyed than I was yesterday because um, I think this report places too much of the blame on Deloitte. And while they are not blameless, I do think that... Um, there's plenty of blame to go around. UHIP is the new benefit system that launched in September and has resulted in problems for thousands of Rhode Islanders who get benefits like food stamps and Medicaid. Deloitte is the company that built the system. There have been significant parts of the system that have never worked and are still not working right now. Eric Bean is the acting director of the Department of Human Services. He conducted the review and presented the unpleasant findings to the House Oversight Committee Wednesday night. While you all are trying to figure it out, People are trying to see how they can make the next day. You've put your finger on the most important thing, and that is the real-world impact of this flawed system. I apologize. In the wake of the report, Governor Gina Raimondo said Wednesday she should not have pulled the trigger to launch UHIP. Three top officials have resigned over the fallout. I was provided with poor information and made a bad decision, but we're going to fix this, and we're going to get through to the other side. You know, the governor apologizing is, is gutsy. And I say that not because it's heroic in any way, but because politicians are so afraid to do it because they're just afraid to get cut, spliced, and uh, run as an element in an opponent's advertising come the next election season. And so, you know, all of my career, I've been asking politicians, elected officials, bureaucrats to just be real, be honest. And when something messes up, say, hey, listen, I'm sorry. You know, you trusted us, the old animal house thing. Um, and so I can't bang the governor here for, for apologizing. Although if you listen to the talk radio lines, and I hope you listen to mine from three to six weekdays on WPRO, there's not much mercy out there, which indicates that there's a complete disconnect as Anastasia Williams, the state rep, was talking about, and the first woman there you see is Pat Serpa, who heads up the Oversight Committee, uh, are trying to articulate. This guy, Eric Bean, who you saw in there testifying, I think is trying to do an earnest job of turning this sucker around. But now they're saying, practically, this will be a year's worth of fix, which does run into quite the election cycle for Governor Armando. So, I don't know, 2018 in our political career, never mind the lives of people who need to be you know, right-sized here, all ride on election season. All righty, uh, let's go to the nation's capital. 
new today before Donald Trump's press conference was this notion that he's got a buddy that's going to do an intelligence review, the New York Times. He's a little upset with uh, the intelligence world out there right now. Uh, maybe he should stop picking on it. Instead now, he's going to have one of his billionaire finance buddies do a review of the intelligence community. Is Okay. All right then, Donald. That makes perfect sense. I'm sorry, Mr. President. Uh, in the meantime, General Flynn's security, as this headline indicates, has been suspended. Um, that makes perfect sense since he's kind of out right now. Here was the latest on uh, all that was late yesterday and today. We're fine, the Lakers. <laughs> They're going to pay a big price for leaking. President Trump has declared war against people leaking classified information to the press. Tweeting this morning, the spotlight has finally been put on the low-life leakers. They will be caught. National Security Advisor Michael Flynn was forced to resign after press reports revealed Flynn misled the American people and Vice President Pence about conversations he had with Russia's ambassador to the U.S. I think it's very, very unfair what's happened to General Flynn, the way he was treated, and the documents and papers that were illegally, I stress that, illegally leaked. The president is reportedly considering appointing Stephen Feinberg, a fellow New York billionaire, to lead a review of U.S. intelligence agencies. Congressional Republicans are also taking up the president's mandate to find the leakers and prosecute them. The leaks to the press are outpacing the information available to Congress right now. Thursday morning, the heads of two House committees sent a letter to the Department of Justice Inspector General asking for an immediate investigation into whether classified material was mishandled. But in a separate letter, Senate Democrats say Attorney General Jeff Sessions, a former advisor to the Trump campaign, should recuse himself and appoint a special counsel to investigate what General Flynn did, who knew about it, and when. If this trail leads to the Oval Office, the person investigating that trail should not be the same person who helped put President Trump there. The president dismissed those concerns Thursday, tweeting the Democrats had to come up with a story as to why they lost the election and so badly that they made up a story. Russia, fake news. You know, this is, this is, this is a kamikaze mission for Donald Trump. There's nothing that's going to change ever, no matter how warm the oven gets he's just gonna fight and fight and fight and fight and fight maybe it's four years i doubt it's eight it could be four weeks i don't know it, it, but he's gonna fight and fight and fight and you know he doesn't really care about making sense listen to what he said yesterday about the media's treatment of general flynn michael flynn general flynn is a wonderful man i think he's been treated very, very unfairly by the media, um, as I call it, the fake media in many cases. And uh, I think it's really a sad thing that he was treated so badly. Mr. President, simple question. When's the last time the media was authorized to fire your national security advisor? You did. They didn't. You did. And your press secretary, Sean Spicer, after cleaning up Kellyanne Conway, your communication consultant, whatever, counsel, said it was a trustworthy relationship. Then it was a matter of trust broken. And the next morning, you're saying he's the greatest guy in the world and it's all the media's fault. Now, I don't know what that is. Is that an olive branch to General Flynn in case he decides to talk? I don't know. But it's a mess, no doubt about it. Now, does it reflect on our state at all? I don't know. Look at this headline. This is, um, uh, why Sean Spicer is disgraced to Rhode Island. Gosh, when I saw that, I went, oh, really? Well, here's an example. Sense that there's an organized pushback and people are being paid to protest? Oh, absolutely. I mean, protesting has become a profession now. They have every right to do that, don't get me wrong, but I think that we need to call it what it is. It's not these organic uprisings that we've seen through the last several decades. That the, you know, the Tea Party was a very organic movement. This has become a very paid uh, astroturf type movement. Hey there. What's wrong with that? <laughs> What's wrong with that is uh, I was at many of those protests. I was at 
U.S. Senator Sheldon White has his town hall, which was so big they had to move it outside in Nathan Bishop Middle School. I've seen the videos of Providence High School students walking out on Inauguration Day. And A, I would invite Mr. Spicer, who's a native of Rhode Island, to provide compelling evidence that people just in his home state, never mind the rest of the country, never mind the world, where protests took place around the world, that's how far this conspiracy of paid protesters would have to go, just in his home state alone. I'd love to see him provide evidence that these people were paid, and I'd love for him to come back at the inevitable next protest to ask some of these people to their face, are you paid and by whom? Sean Spicer is a self-professed man of integrity, and my definition of integrity, especially when you're a communications professional, means being sure you have the truth before you make a wide smear like saying people who are exercising their First Amendment constitutional right to protest, which for now is still legal, are being paid to do so. All right. Phil Isle is a journalist. Uh, his last full-time operation was with the Phoenix, which was, That's right. I think, a terrible blow to the community to, to lose that newspaper. You've since been teaching, freelancing, right. working on your book. Right prodding the federal government to release information so yeah. you can write your book. Uh, we'll catch up with that uh, a little bit later in the broadcast. But you, you write this piece and suggest that Mr. Spicer is actually an embarrassment to the state of Rhode Island, correct? Yeah, I, yeah, I believe that. All right, well, hold your thought. Why Phil believes that when we come back. Stay with us. Look, I, I've spent, as David mentioned, I've spent 17 and a half years in the Navy as a public affairs officer. I spent three years in the Bush administration, served 11 different members of Congress in some capacity, mostly as a spokesperson. I, I believe that you, the one thing that whether you're Republican, Democrat, Independent, you have your integrity. Um, I may tell a reporter I can't comment on something or, um, you know, I, I'm not able to discuss that, but I've never lied. And I don't think, and I don't intend, I, I would argue that anybody who's an aspiring um, communicator adhere to that because you if you lose your the respect and trust of the press corps you, you got nothing you know lie is a powerful word I mean when if you if you lie no one wants to admit to lying or being a liar in fact I think other than being a, you know a violent criminal lying is the worst character uh, trait that you can have I'll give you a different phrase okay easily disprovable information on the day after the inauguration, Sean Spicer, White House press secretary, who we just saw in that clip, went out in front of the fancy, the iconic uh, lectern in the famous White House briefing room, and he proceeded to make a number of claims that for anybody with an internet account and access to Google were easily disprovable. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and say he wasn't lying, but that's as I say in the piece, he's the most famous spokesman in the world. That was his first day on the job. And in the words of the Washington Post, which gave him four Pinocchios for his performance, he said that there were, first time there were floor coverings on the mall. He was talking about the crowds now. Are not the biggest issue in the world. Said there were floor coverings for the first time. That wasn't true. He said the crowd extended to the Washington Monument. That wasn't true. He said. He cited false numbers about uh, the number of people who would use mass transport that day in D.C. That wasn't true. Uh, he said it was the largest audience ever to witness this event in person and around the world. He didn't have compelling and convincing evidence to prove that. So when he went out and did that, on his first day on the job, I, as a journalist in his home state, someone who makes my living trying to get to the truth of things, and facts do exist, uh, I was embarrassed by that. And I argue in this piece that I'm probably not the only one in a state that has world-renowned colleges and universities, in a state that has a daily newspaper that's won four Pulitzer Prizes, in a state that has one of the highest percentages of its residents that believe that global warming is real and it's going to have real consequences. I, of course, can only speak for myself, but that to me was a shameful performance, and I don't think it's gotten much better since then. You know, I, I don't know him. Uh, he actually has a relationship with uh, Channel 12, my employer, and Fox Providence. Um, 
Patrick Little most recently went down to visit him. You should check WPRI.com for that uh, that essay. And you know, we had our first ever Skype um, come from Channel 12. And so he's kind of given a wink to Rhode Island for some yeah. coverage, and I think that's terrific. Uh, I'm not ready to say he's a I, look. I think I think he's just so way over his head and so mismatched for the job. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to have a white hat with a black hat. I mean, and the press, the, the, the press secretary has always been uh, somebody who could position the president in the, in the most credible way and be disciplined about it. He fights his harder, harder than Donald Trump does. And so he's of a course. principal that I think has the complete incorrect disposition for this particular uh, job. I don't know that it reflects on Rhode Island. I think it's just, look, you're having some fun with that, obviously, or you really actually feel like it does reflect on the state. How does it reflect on the state? Well, I, I mean, think from a, just a factual perspective, the, you know. I mean, we, we have corrupt politicians. I mean, you, you just, I, I, it was a beautiful essay, and it reminded me about what kind of a powerful place this is, all the good things you just listed about Rhode Island. But we also have a reputation for some stuff, and Sean Spicer, uh, is is hardly a direct embarrassment to the state when we've had so Look, much it's, it's, to be embarrassed about. <laughs> is Sean Spicer the biggest issue facing Rhode Island when we had something like the UHIP crisis causing us $350 million that you mentioned at the top of the show? No. But I'm a guy who covers Rhode Island. I'm a guy who uh, grew up here. And you and I both know that Rhode Islanders, if nothing else, pay attention when one of our own goes on to do big things. We did it with Pauly e. D and the reality TV. That was embarrassing. We did it with Brock. I think I think Pauly e. well, D was more embarrassing than John Spicer. Well, oh, come well, on, the stakes were a lot lower. Uh, well, my, I don't know. The is, average Rhode Islander might disagree with okay. you on that, and that's what's well, embarrassing. Look, here's a point I'd like to make. You know, I, I'm, D. I'm oh. an independent. I was free hoping to forget about Pauly e. D. <laughs> I just brought it back. Um, you know. As a freelancer, I can kind of say what I feel, and it's on me. If people think I've gone over the line, they won't hire me, right? What, what's more honest in terms of accountability than that? And, um, you know, what, what really sparked this was seeing him in the clip you played earlier saying these protesters were paid. Yeah. I, had, I had seen these things with my own eyes. You know, to, to, and another thing is, I had seen a little bit in the news this kind of, and this happens all the time, kind of wide-eyed, starstruck, neutral coverage of when a Rhode Islander goes on to a big thing. It was like, it was merely a fact, and I wasn't seeing any spin on it, and that's okay, because I, other news organizations have to play this straight and narrow. But this isn't a guy, in my opinion, that we ought to be proud of. Someone who goes out and in his first day in the job tells things that everyone knows are untrue. I don't, I don't know, it, 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 I will tell you this. Or smears protesters. It, it's got to be. It's got to be a job that requires uh, oh. Alka-Seltzer and, and et cetera and on a regular basis. Can you imagine if, with this very important story with General Flynn, that after Kellyanne Conway talked about the mutual trust that existed between Flynn and the president, but an hour later, after the Post story hits, that he's got to talk about the trust being broken, only to see Donald Trump the next morning, yesterday, uh, you know, talking about how much um, the Flynn was a terrific guy and it was all the media's fault. I, I don't know how you score that in the press office and try to figure out how you're going to position this guy one minute after the next, never mind one day. I, I mentioned this the other day on Twitter. We forget that when you brush aside all the xenophobia and the fear mongering, the thing that Donald Trump was supposed to bring to the table was business acumen. The ability to get things done, to run things like a clean, efficient corporation. And part of a corporation is messaging. And you just pointed to the fact that they don't have their story straight. That was something he was supposed to do, the CEO coming into the White House. Um, do I think Sean Spicer has an easy job? Absolutely not. I do not envy the person who has to defend a president who says with no evidence that three to five million people have voted illegally. And you know how Sean Spicer did it? He said the president believes that. And he keeps going back to this idea that the president believes that. But somewhere, uh, somewhere along the line, he's got to protect his own brand because there will be life after after the president well, and after this job. And I'm guessing it's going to end sooner than later. Right? For who? Uh, good question. <laughs> we'll perhaps make conjecture on that when we come back. Stay with us. Hey, we'll do a couple questions. 
Go. Glenn Thrush, New York Times. Boo! Go ahead. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask about the travel ban on Muslims. Yeah, it's not a ban. I'm sorry? It's not a ban. The travel ban is not a ban, which makes it not a ban. But you just called it a ban. Because I'm using your words. You said ban. You said ban. Now I'm saying it. The president to you. tweeted, and I quote, yeah. if the ban were announced with a one week notice. Yeah, exactly. You just said that. He's quoting you. It's your words. That was the milder of the two bits that yeah. she's done so far. That was the first one. Uh, I, I think most Rhode Islanders do wince over that. There's no doubt about that. But that's SNL's creativity. Um, anyway, let's not forget the Michael Flynn, also Rhode Island guy. So we've got. Uh, I don't even have to write a piece about him. He we, wrote his own resignation we, letter. We've got a little situation going on there. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, um, what do we do with your disposition here? What are we supposed to say about Rhode Islanders being embarrassed about this? I have to tell you, if I walk down the street at Ken well, Kennedy Plaza, I don't know, yeah. Providence Place Mall, I don't know, uh, Main Street, Cranston, I don't know, Park Street, Cranston, and ask people if they were embarrassed by Sean Spicer. Eight of them wouldn't know who Sean Spicer is. Look, so I, so you know, it's. I, I never claim to speak for anyone other than one Rhode Island resident, but I will say, since you brought it up, the piece did get a lot of traction. It was shared a lot of times when I came over here. It was number the number one red piece on WGBH's site. It hit a nerve with somebody. Mm. I didn't share it two hundred times. Oh, well, I didn't bring you on here to, to bust your horns just but, uh, to give listen, you a thought. I just, you know, I, someone's got to play a devil advocate. Sure. You, you have no idea what it's been like in the last year or so as a, as a host, both on radio and television, who's been, a, who's perceived as a conservative, but who's been a never Trump guy. By the way, I'm moderate right at best. But right. here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, I can't get anybody in here to say Sean Spicer's a terrific guy. I can't get in here to say anybody in here to say Donald Trump is doing a good, good job. Look, I, so this, so I have to push back on you a look, little bit. And look, I, I'm not asking for much. When he was asked in what was admittedly a softball teed up question from the Fox News host, which mentioned paid protesters, here's what he says. These people are exercising their constitutional right to protest. I and the president respect that. That's one of the things that makes this country great. And we will hope to convince them through our policies and our message to stop protesting. Hmm. How hard is that to say? Instead, he says they're paid. It's astroturf. That's insulting. Well, that's but that's 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 the consistent way they fight. That that's the way they fight. You well, asked a question, or we both asked each other a question at the end of the last segment. Who goes but, first, Donald Trump or Sean Spicer? But my guess is Sean Spicer will go before. To Donald your Trump point, does. simply because they keep lying doesn't mean that I and everyone else should stop calling them out on lying or being hypocrites or whatever it is. Right, I'm just, uh, people say, Amen. I think it's, it's part of the, uh, it's a byproduct of their particular brand of politics that y it gets tiresome, but I for one, as one Rhode Islander with an internet connection and a laptop, I'm gonna keep calling things as I see well, it. Well, you know, maybe your piece will get national attention so that you can also be labeled fake news. I, I'm, surprised you, I'm surprised you didn't introduce me as fake news. <laughs> no, I kind of hate the topic. All right, we're out of time. We'll catch up on your other work soon. Good to see you. Thanks for having me back. Goodbye, ladies and gentlemen. I'll tell you what's up next tomorrow. Coming up next. Stay with All righty. You know, we could run a little pool on who goes first, Sean Spicer or Donald Trump, but that would be, that would be unsportsmanlike, so we won't do that. Uh, very important roundtable on what the week has brought to us coming up tomorrow night. I'll see you on the radio at 3 on WPRL. Bye.